All right, good day, scholars. Let me jump and take one time. This is the second class. Square root of 16 is 4. You should know that. 4 by 4 is 16, so the square root of 16 is 4. But there's another way. There's another way to write this. I can write the square root of 16 is equal to 16 to the power of a half. That is the way to write square root in terms of indices. My pause is in all kind of thing. Yeah, this is, they're so deep, you know. So this is a new way that you learn how to write square root. So square root can be written as 16 to the power of a half. By the way, we had homework from last class. Let me just do them homework first. So this is a to the power of 5 because they're adding up. All right, we'll do this piece by piece. P squared plus the 5. So we take the 2 and the 5 because you're seeing common bases there. And let's do Q by 10, take away 2. So in the end, we would have ended up with P to the power of 7 and Q to the power of 8. This homework was from the last class. We don't really have space for this one. Let me squeeze this here. Hey, you're multiplying but different signs. So this is really M to the power of 6 plus negative 6. Um, m to the power of zero which is one we learned that last class i just get a bad feeling that that camera not on i'm just check this on me all right we was inside we was inside so so this last one looks like we have eight to the power of seven you all see the three plus four giving us seven there, right and eight to the power of seven and this would be eight to the power of seven take away seven which is eight to the power of zero which is one Kind of squeeze up, but we get the answers. Back to where we're doing. So we're continuing in indices and we're learning about something called the fractional index. You wouldn't really hear that term a lot, but this is just a way we use fractions in indices. Uh, a fractional power. To, what does it mean? Like if you see 25, what, what about if you had x to the power of a half? This is the square root of x, you know. That's the square root of x because you have a 2 there. And we can't really go down to the next line. Like, don't come now and say, everybody like to always have a final answer. When you're now starting math, you like to, okay, I'll get three units. I'm done. But we don't know what x is here, so we can't get an answer. So you just stop right there. So stop right there. So, so we are about to add on one more rule. Last class, we did these four rules and went through that very nicely. So now you have a next rule in your repertoire. Let me, let's just do one more. One more for this class. And we'll call that George. Give you some homework. Go on with your life. 27 to the power of a third. Same thing. See, this is true. You're going to come here and get the third root of 27. This is a number, so we can find this. So let me just bust out my calculator and them here. Latau on shift here. Yeah of 27 so you see i get the cube root of 27 is equal to 3. so we could go ahead and get the answer for this is this is 3. all right and if we check 3 by 3 by 3 3 3 to the power of 3 3 cube we'll get back the 27 because we get 9 by 3 27. all right next question what about this oh this is the next rule i wanted to show you all about Watch this. Tell me if you understand what happened in here. We have 1 divided by 3 squared. Another way we could write this is using a negative index. The negative here indicates that the, the base has to come under. In the denominator, under 1, right? So you're yeah, inverting it. Alright, let's see. Like If we have 1 over x to the power of 5, this is the same thing as x to the negative 5. Very useful when it comes to simplifying stuff, you know. So that's one more rule to go, and we'll call that George, right? That's that's the one more rule that I wanted to add. Now, in the rule we do before, you see in 1 over n here, so it means that's the nth root. In other words, if I had a to the power of 1 fifth, then that's equal to the fifth root of a. And here, if I have a to the power of negative 2, that's equal to 1 over a squared. Press like on the video if you understand that. Question time. Let's just do these questions. Um, pause the video and try and do the question ahead of me and see if you get the same answer, right? Um, 
so I'm getting the 25 adding up so I'm gonna put a 2 plus 5 and I'm getting this 3 and 7 subtracted so this is gonna be B not 7 take away 3 eh? 3 take away 7 because this is on top and this is below uh, I'm going to get a negative number here, but that's okay. We know how to deal with that now. This is a to the power of 7 and b to the power of negative 4. Because 3 take away 7 is negative 4. And this is the same as a to the power of 7 over b to the power of 4. So I could express it as this because I know that this means get yourself underneath that. Become a denominator, my brother. Or I can leave it in this. Next question, 12 times... Okay, they say find the value of last time, they said simplify. This time, we need to actually find the actual value. So, this is the same as 12 times 2 by 4 plus 7 all over 2 to the power of 13. This is the same as 12 times 2 to the power of 11 divided by 2 to the power of 13. This is the same as 12 times... 2 to the power of 11 minus 13 12 times 2 to the power of negative 2 let's come back up here to finish off this thing number 12 multiply by 1 over 2 squared which is the same as 12 multiplied by a quarter which is the same as 12 divided by 4 which is the same as 3 you all got that answer? I hope you're pausing the video and then doing the question and not just waiting for me to finish it you know. this one it looks a little tricky but it let's see what's happening here we're gonna add the powers because you're multiplying i just taking it for granted that you watch the last video and you know that rule and one six and one six is a turn now what we know about fractional powers that's the same as the cube root of eight which is you can verify in your calculator that it's going to be two Love and blessings for the homework. Uh, for the homework, you can do some research. There's, there are lots of questions on indices and internet. If you want some specific questions that get towards your NCSE form, three syllabus, you can look on my website, coinspringer.com, in the assignment page, or you can go to the student hub and get some questions there. Love and blessings. Share, like, subscribe, comment. See you in the next class.